Anyway, you see everything. You know everything. And we're here to know the truth. And we know, Lord, that we are men and women of truth. We don't want no lies, no deception of the enemy. We want to see ourselves in the message, good or bad. If it's bad, you still love us. If it's good, you still love us. But you point things out not to accuse us, but you point things out to us that we might call upon you to help us to change that particular thing in our lives that can cause so much trouble in our lives, in our families, in our society, and in our world. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that is the real teacher. And we long for him to teach us, to enlighten us, to illuminate our hearts, that we might walk with our God. We thank you, Father, for this time and for each person that's here today. Every person is precious in your sight. And you died for every one of us. But you gave us life. When we received Christ, we received life. You are the God of life. And we thank you that we have life because we have him who is life. Christ, our Savior and our Lord. We thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's put on the board. The first thing that we want to put on the board uh, this morning is uh, Romans 5.17. Romans 5.17, as he puts that on the board, we're going to take our time. This is more of a teaching than a preaching. I can preach it or I can teach it. But I want us to understand some things, comprehend some things that we might be able to apply the word of God to our lives. Hallelujah for the cross. <clears throat> All right, let's read that on the board. Are we ready? For if because of one man's trespass, lapse, offense, death reigned through that one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with himself, reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. We were talking this morning about Job and the problems that he had. We were talking about suffering. Why does the suffering come into the world? Well, we've got to go back to the garden and remember that God gave Adam and Eve the command to rule and reign and to take authority and be in authority, watch over the garden. And Adam named all the animals of one thing or another. And they were to rule and reign. But because they didn't rule and reign, Satan got in the garden and deceived them. And therefore sin and death came on into this world and that's why we have suffering are you listening it all goes back to the garden but let me say this that if we do not reign and rule because the same uh, command has been given to us to rule and reign and notice what God has given to us he's given to us the free gift of righteousness as a Christian we are righteous with his righteousness we know we have none of our own. That was due to Adam's sin. And so Satan got into this world and became the God of this world. And because he's the God of this world is why you're having people over there in Syria, Iraq, all over there killing one another, bumming one another, because that's the work of the evil one, Satan. But because of Adam's sin, we all became sinners Sin and death entered into this world. And therefore, because of that, we have to suffer. Three things that will be redeemed. Our spirit, these bodies, and this earth will be redeemed one day when Christ comes back at the second coming. The curse will be lifted. And the curse will not be on this earth anymore. 
So a lot of suffering, when people ask, why does God allow suffering? No, you should, should have said, why did Adam allow it? <laughs> well, he allowed it because he didn't obey God. Instead of reigning and ruling and kicking the enemy out, he let the enemy in. And Eve became deceived and he became, he was not deceived. The Bible says he was not deceived. He willfully did it. And so we're in the fix that we have. So Christ came back now to this earth. He came to this earth to redeem our spirits. And one day our bodies will be redeemed. We will have a glorified body. And one day this earth will be redeemed. When Christ comes back and sets his feet back on Mount Olive, he left there and he's coming back there. Over there in Israel. That's why the devil's trying to uh, do all he can to just destroy the Jews and and if he can, he'd probably destroy Mount Olive. And if he could do that, the Lord wouldn't have a mountain to come back on. So he's, uh, he's a, a tricker, isn't he? Now, we might say, well, Adam, why did you do that? Well, let's ask ourselves a question. And not to bring condemnation upon us, but why do we allow the enemy to lie to us and deceive us? Why? Okay. Well, first of all, a lot of Christians don't know that they have power over all the powers of the enemy. They don't know that our weapons are mighty through God to the tearing down of strongholds. So you got to watch things that come against you and try to enter into your temple or in your family. You need to take authority and use the weapons which are mighty through God to the tearing down of those strongholds. <coughs> the enemy has come to steal and to destroy. Now, if you're born again by the Spirit of God, the Bible says that we are born again by the incorruptible word or seed of the word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost. As many as receive him, God gives them the authority and the power to become sons of God. So God has given us the power. He has caused our spirits to be born again. And we are alive unto God. And he has given us the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace to do what? To reign in this life through Christ Jesus our Lord. One of the things that I had to learn when I became a Christian, and I had to learn a lot of things, and I'm still learning, but I had to learn to take the weapons of God and use it against the enemy and tell him to get out of my garden in the name of Jesus. Because God has given me the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace, unmerited favor, to reign in this life through Christ Jesus, my Lord. Now, let's finish reading. Let's go to the next verse. Well then, as one man's trespass, one man's false step and falling away led to condemnation for all men. Woo! That's heavy, isn't it? So one man's act of righteousness that leads to acquittal and right standing with God and life for all men. So one man, Adam, brought sin and death. That's why people die. Because of Adam's disobedience, he allowed sin and death to enter this planet, open the door for Satan to come in and to be the God of this world. Satan is the God of this world. And Satan has blinded the unbeliever from the glorious light of the gospel. We were talking about does Satan still have power? Well, I know we don't know all the answers yet, but we're still learning. But he is able to blind the unbeliever from the... <coughs> glorious light of the gospel. 
And that's where we are to come in and pray against the enemy to break his power over our loved ones. That that unbelief would go and the light of the gospel would come in and they would see their condition and call upon the name of the Lord. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's, uh, let's read, finish reading that. And one man's act, we, which we already done, but I'm going to do it again. One man's act of righteousness, which was Jesus Christ, leads to acquittal and right standing with God and life and for all men. Let's go to the next verse. For just as by one man's disobedience, who was Adam, failing to hear and he heedlessness and carelessness, the many were constituted sinners. So by one man's obedience, the many will be constituted righteous, made acceptable to God, brought into right standing with God. So by the disobedience of one man, the first Adam, which was created from the dust of the earth, did not take his place and rule and reign and take charge. He failed. And Satan came in, deceived his wife. And so Adam had to make a decision, either go with his wife or God. And he went with his wife. But it brought sin and death to this world. That's one of the reasons why there is much suffering on planet Earth. And there's many other reasons. We're not going to cover them all today. But why is there sometimes so much unnecessary suffering that comes in our lives? So I think we need to check and see, are we being obedient? Because there's a consequence for every decision we make. That's just the way it is. It doesn't mean that God don't love us, but if we make wrong decisions in our finances, we're going to suffer the consequence. If we make wrong decisions in, in choosing uh, relationships, uh, we will suffer the consequence. That's just the way it is. So it behoves us to think and to seek God's counsel and God's wisdom in every situation and everything that comes into our life. Susan has told people, we've been married for 62 years. Don't I have a beautiful wife? Isn't she precious? She, she's, just, she's more beautiful inside. Well, she's beautiful outside. I've got to watch myself here now. Uh, <laughs> don't want to get, but she's beautiful outside. She's beautiful inside. Her goodness has brought me to repentance. God's goodness has brought me to repentance. Romans chapter 2, verse 4. See, I wasn't a Christian when we first got married. I was a Christian in my brain, but not in my heart. Oh, I believe there was a God. I believe Jesus Christ was the Son of God. But he didn't live in my heart till I invited him to come in. As many as receive. Everybody say, as many as receive. as receive. Same thing with the righteousness. We have to receive that righteousness. When we receive Christ, we receive his righteousness. We become righteous. God sees us as righteous. Now, we're here to... Oh, praise the Lord. Pass the ammunition. We're here... We're here on this earth to reign and rule. Thank you, son. Appreciate it. Is that bitter? I'm ready. All right, here we go. I got a hanky right here. All right. All my notes are nice and wet. I knew that pressure was that preacher was a wet preacher. Where was I at? Oh yeah, reigning and rule. I'm going to reign and rule right here. 
Did God cause that? <laughs> Who caused that? I did, innocently. You know, I did that. I can't blame God, can't blame you, can't even blame my wife. I did it. And I take full responsibility. Lord, forgive me. I tell you, that's the only way to keep your freedom. Is bow before a holy God and say, Lord, it was me. It was me, Lord. And he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I got a question I want to ask you. If you've been cleansed from all unrighteousness, what unrighteousness do you have? None. None. I mean, that's scripture. I didn't say I couldn't sin. I didn't say I couldn't turn the water over. I didn't mean to. But I did. So we go on. We don't, we don't just close up shop and, and fuss at everybody. Okay. Look what it says now. Now, let's make something very clear. All right, so we've all been constituted. When we accept Christ, we've all been constituted now as righteous and holy. I know it's hard for us to say, I'm holy. How many is in here who ever said, I'm holy? Very few. All right, I'll give you, I'll give, I'm going to give you a, a workout. How many here knows Jesus as their personal Savior? Raise your hand. All right. Are you holy? Yes. Yeah. I, I, I'm talking to that crowd over there. They, they ain't listening. I'm talking to this crowd over here. How many in the, on, this, on this side has accepted Jesus as your personal Savior? How many over here is holy? Okay. And where did you get the holiness from? From Jesus. Right. You, he, he gave you his righteousness. And don't fuss and argue about it. Just receive it. Just receive it, you see. Didn't say you couldn't sin. You can sin in it. I didn't say I couldn't turn the water over. Got some more water to turn over. Eh? <laughs> Here's to you, folks. <laughs> okay. Now, We fuss at God sometimes and say, God, why are you allowing this? And God is saying, why are you allowing this? You know? Because sometimes we allow things to happen or come into our lives when God's will says, no, don't do it, son. But we choose to let it come in and now we have to suffer the consequence. Okay? So remember that. Keep that in mind. That's why, that's why we have to learn to say, God, I had to trust you to save me from a burning hell. But you know what I want now is that you would help me in this sanctifying work that you're doing in my life. Because I'm able sometimes to change the outward thing, but I can't change my heart. And only God can do that. So now you are learning to let God be Lord of your life and say, Lord, your word says you have begun a good work in me. And you, Lord, will continue that work until the coming of the Lord. Now listen to me. Everybody here, I think, is saved. If you're not, get saved. Our brother accepted the Lord the other day. We're so glad to have him in the family of God. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. <laughs> Keeping things out of our family, out of our mind, out of our spirit is very important. If you're saved, you can't get no more saved. Does everybody agree with that? Amen. Simple, not complicated. Okay. So what is next for us to let God do a work in us? Not many people are aware that God is working today. Amen. Now I know what Christ did on the cross was done once and for all. We are saved, we're children of God, we've been made righteous, we're holy, we're God's children, we have eternal life, God's forgiven us of all our sins, 
That's done. That's finished. That's complete. But how many of you know when you buy a car and you pay cash for it, it's yours, it's done, that's it. But how many know you have to maintain it? Every week you got to fill the tank up with gas. Check the water, check the oil. Some of you girls don't even know the car's got oil in the engine. How many know, <laughs> how many girls in here know that there's oil in the engine? Let me see your hands. How many don't know? Y'all say, <laughs> that's why you got me, baby. I take care of all that stuff. But, but I tell my grandchildren, I say, listen, the car is yours. It's done. It can't get no more yours. But you got to maintain it. And that's the job that we have today. Maintaining ourselves in every respect, physically, mentally, spiritually, maintaining our relationship with one another and maintaining our relationship with God. Now listen to me, I love you, but if you're not right with one another, you're not right with God. I didn't say you wasn't saved. But is there anybody in here that you are holding grudges to that you've been offended by and you haven't forgiven them as Christ has forgiven you? Bob, you did have to bring all that. This was a pretty good message till you brought all that out. But I, children, I want you to maintain your, your, your relationship with God because in doing that, you've got to maintain your relationship with one another. That's just the way it is. Okay? Now remember, the scripture that we read a while ago, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13, God sees everything, He knows everything, and you can't fool Him. And you can't fool me. I've been around too long. Sorry, 83 years old, I've learned a little something. If I hadn't learned anything by now, the rest of you don't stand a chance. Isn't that right, baby? See, my wife would say, yeah, right. tell them, Bob. I will, I will, I believe I will. Now, <clears throat> I want people to walk out of this place today free. Now, right now, the Lord knows who in this fellowship or in your family you like to send to the moon. <laughs> or Mars, further away. Come on, let's be honest. I mean, I've, I've had people like that. It took me one time three months to forgive this woman that hurt me so deeply. How many of you know we're still in these human bodies and we can get hurt? And you wonder, what's, I don't seem to be, what is this, this yak in me? What, what is this, I just don't feel right about something. You may be mad at your daddy or your mama. Of course, you'd never, you wouldn't, you'd never, you'd never, no, I wouldn't say that, no. No, no, no you love your pastor. But there are a few deacons and elders in this place that I like to send to the moon. See, you got to maintain your freedom. Put uh, Romans 8, 2 up there. Romans 8, 2. <coughs> Ain't much longer. But we want to see me in the message, good or bad. Me in the message. Now, let me talk to the children. How many young people in here are obedient to your parents? I got one back there. Another one back there, another way back. Did you raise your hand, honey? <laughs> Why is that preacher pointing at me? Because <laughs> see, if you're not obedient to your parent, you're going to suffer the consequence. No more bubble gum. That's it. Cut you off on bubble gum. Even us that have grown have to be kind to our parents. 
So we got to watch and make sure that we're maintaining our liberty. Now look at what that says. For the law of the spirit of life. Everybody say spirit of life. Spirit of life. Spirit of life. Not a set of rules, but the spirit of life. Spirit of life. Not a set of rules. Spirit of life. 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 You know, when life comes up in, in, in a seed and the seed breaks over, the life begins to come forth and it just grows. You don't have to grunt. You better grow. I planted you just last week. You ain't even showing anything yet. You ain't even broke the earth yet. And all of a sudden, one day, two weeks later, the rain and the sunshine, it breaks up. It's coming forth. Life brings it forth. Life brings it forth. How much of God's life is operating in our lives today? Because look, it's important, which is in Christ Jesus. If you're in Christ Jesus, uh, you're a Christian, you are in Christ Jesus. And in Christ Jesus, there is this law that operates and it's called the law of life. And that life will set you free from the law of, say it, sin and death. Oh, I got to just do better in this thing. Man, I got I to gotta do something here. I just got to whip this thing. Appropriate. 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 By faith. The life. The life of Christ, which is in every one of us. Let his life take over. Yes. Oh, my children, listen to me. Let his life live in you. Or you'll have to quit living your own life. And by faith, let his life live in you and watch things change. Or you couldn't stand a person, now you love them. You're not, you're not somebody running around moaning and groaning and negative all the time, speaking negative all the time. You look negative, you smell negative, you are negative. When that life is operating in you, it overcomes everything. That law of life overcomes the sin and the death that wants to grip us. If I could just get a job making a hundred thousand dollars a day, I could be happy. Let me tell you something. In my almost 60 years of, of ministry, my wife and me, we have dealt with people with millions of dollars. Two boats, three cars, five houses, house in Canada, one in South America. People that have got everything and they have no life. I've seen people with nothing. Hey! Hey, got life, boy. Ha, 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 ha. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Hey, hip, hip, hip. Hey, buddy, hip, hip, hip. You think I'm crazy? I am. I'm crazy about Jesus. Amen. Amen. You got it. You got one. As you read the Word of God, there's life in the Word of God. My Word is life. Yes, the first Adam brought sin and death into the world. But Christ has brought life back to this world, but we have to tap into it. Now we have, we have, but we have to learn to nurture that life. Feed that life by coming to church, learning the Word of God, just reading the Word of God. Susan and me, we have, um, we have, uh, where is it at? Well, anyway, we have the love Bibles. Sometimes we just... We're in John now. We're reading every, chapter by chapter. We just read it. We just read it. And you can read that chapter and you feel life. You feed. See, what you feed grows. Amen. What you don't feed dies. Precious little baby comes into the world. You don't feed it. It will die. We've been born again by the Spirit of God, but we have to feed our inner man. Man is a spirit. He has a soul, and he lives in a body. 
I don't see Charles. Charles is a spirit. Charles is, Charles is in this body. Jacob, where are you at, son? I know you somewhere, boy. You in that body. That What you see in the mirror is not you. That's just a temporary tent that you're living in while you're on this earth. But you are a spirit being. And that spirit is eternal. But you have to feed that spirit. Now, this outer man, you can tell I've been feeding mine. Ain't you can't see you right. How many can tell that, huh? Huh? Okay, Jen. How many can? Yeah, I can look at you and say, you've been feeding yourself too. I tell you. <laughs> and we rightly so. We've got to feed the outer man. But we've got to feed that inner man. Yes, we've been born again. Yes, when we die, we're going to heaven. But we have to maintain ourselves down here and maintain everything that we have. Have you noticed that if you don't cut your grass at home, it grows up? How many notice that? <laughs> How many notice if you don't comb your hair once a week? I don't have to worry about that too much. But anyway, some, you, 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 you got to wash your face. You got to wash your hands. It, it gets sort of old at times. Well, just don't do it anymore. And you start coming to church, you, you don't take your bath, we'll, we'll have a special room back there for you. <laughs> Still love you, but you know. But, but, but that's true. Think of all that you do to maintain your outer man. And if you don't maintain that outer man, death will come back in and you'll start stinking. Called the stinking, first stinking church of North Charleston. <laughs> Nobody takes a bath. What well, do you know? A lot of Christians need to take a bath in their spirit. When's the last time you had a good Holy Ghost time in the Word of God and spent a, a half an hour reading the Word? Don't, I don't want to look. <laughs> Learning to wash the inner man, notice, with the Word of God. And Ephesians tells us that. Every spot and every wrinkle will come out by the washing of the word. The washing of the word. We have a lot of stinking Christians sometimes around here. Because you know why they stink, honey? You want me to tell you? Huh? You want to really know? Hmm? They don't take a bath in the word of God. And they tink. Remember that. You start tinking. Isn't that right, Charles? Okay, Charles, tell you that. Right, right, Willie? How many in here stink? Remember, God's, God knows. God knows. As the pastor, I have to watch over the sheep and say, smell them out. You know, I'm using humor, but I'm speaking truth. So I want to encourage you. Yes, we're saved. Praise God. Christ did it on the cross. Can't get no more saved than you are. If you die right now, you're going to heaven. If the devil wouldn't have you down there praising God. Drive him nuts. <laughs> no, we're saved. But we have to maintain ourselves. And we have to stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set us free and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. How many Christians I have to take and try to help them to come out of that bondage because they weren't ruling and reigning with the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness that God has given to them and they've allowed sin to come back into the garden and Satan is there and they are wondering why am I not happy? And we all have to be careful because Jesus said in the last days, deception will be very strong and there'll be many that will leave the faith. Now, you got to be in the faith to be able to leave it. You have to be in this building before you can leave it. And it grieves my heart as a pastor. In my lifetime, many of them just was careless. They thought they didn't have to guard their garden. 
It lets Satan come in and deceive. And now the whole family, the structure falls apart. So let's reign and rule in our homes, reign and rule in these houses. Remember, we are the temple of God. Watch what you look at, because what you look at is going to get into the garden. And contamination will come on your spirit. You can tell if your spirit is free, because it feels light, you feel good, you feel close to God, you feel washed, you feel cleansed. And if you don't, get into the Word of God. It just, I tell you what, I'll encourage everybody this week, get into the book of Ephesians and just read verse by verse. You say, well, I read that chapter one time 40 years ago. <laughs> oh, my brother, my sister. Let me tell you, I can tell you something. Uh, many of you are going to even remember what I preached this morning. Tomorrow, you say, what did he preach on anyway? I'll look at Susan and say, what did I preach on, honey? <laughs> she said, I don't remember. I don't know. That's why we have the tapes back there. <laughs> Grab a bunch of those tapes back there. <laughs> Instead of putting the, wrong, the Long Ranger on your TV, put Bob Tilton or Willie or Frank. and uh, get, get some of those messages going through your house. Get, a, get that atmosphere of your home filled with the Word of God. Filled with the power of God. And watch things change. Now. Got just a few minutes and I want to share something with you. I think it was last week I said, you know, I'm free. I'm really free. From turning glasses over. <laughs> um, I had an experience yesterday. Uh, my, Susan and me were invited out for dinner. Of course, none of you all have ever experienced anything like this. And it was my family, my two, see, two daughters, my, my son-in-law and my granddaughter and Susan and me. So they invited Susan and me out for dinner. Guess who paid for it? <laughs> I don't understand that. <laughs> what am I, Santa Claus? <laughs> well, I don't believe in Santa Claus, sorry. <laughs> now, now, I, I said last week, I can give money away, and, 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 and it don't bother me at all. Some of you all, you, you have, I noticed you don't even bring your wallet to church. <laughs> Look at Susan over there. <laughs> oh, brother, what is he going to do now? Let's see if I got a $1 bill here. Yeah, there's one right there. Yeah, but you wouldn't give somebody $1, would you? Would you? Would you? You would? Huh? Or would you rather have one or five? <laughs> Did you invite me out for dinner? <laughs> now, the, the, the dinner came to $75, you know, and, and they give me this thing, and I, said, I get my, my, my daughter, my youngest daughter, she's good with mathematics. I, I said, honey, fill this thing out for me. I give her my card. $25 tip. <laughs> I forgot every scripture that I've... <laughs> oh, God, I tell you. Oh, I was calm on the outside. I was cool, you know. <laughs> But I'm talking about inside, there was a war going on. That's what I told my wife. They wanted to go to this barbecue place. I like to go to, uh, the, to uh, Golden Corral, where you just, you know, you give a couple of dollars or five dollars. But twenty-five dollars? My goodness, man, I used to work a whole month for that. And my, and my daughter just write twenty-five dollars. Yeah. So it came to a hundred and some and uh, 44, uh, 44 cents or something like that. But after I left, you know, Lord, I thought the old man was crucified at Calvary. <laughs> Bob, get back on the cross. <laughs> oh, oh de death is so painful, Lord. I know. But life comes afterwards. <laughs> 
And so I just gave it to God. I, you know, I died to it. And I said, oh, praise God. Hallelujah. I didn't even like the potato that they gave me. They gave me, supposed to be barbecue on it. I couldn't even taste the, the barbecue from the potato was so big, you know, like that. I said, man, I want to go to Golden Corral right across the corner there. I mean, you got chicken, you got turkey, you got, you got everything. Ice cream for dessert. I had a tater and some barbecue, and I couldn't even taste it, and I paid $100 for it. <laughs> so you have little things like that that shows you, are you really reigning and ruling, you know? And I said, Lord, thank you, you're still teaching me, you still love me. I repent, I thank you, Father, it doesn't matter. They're all, they are all happy. My uh, granddaughter, she's got a job making big money in uh, Philadelphia, and I'm looking at her, I said, when are you going to start, you know? <laughs> she's over there eating the food that Grandpa bought, you know. But listen, maintaining ourselves, there's times you're going to blow it. And that's why we got John 1, 1, 9. God is faithful, and, and he's just. If we will confess, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all of that $25 tip. <laughs> Amen. I think God has spoken. We'll leave it there. Let's pray. Father, if anybody here in this place that does not know you, Lord, if they've been slack and, and, and maintaining themselves in the spiritual sense and even in the natural, God, give them wisdom and strength and power. Let them know that it's available for all of us. And Lord, if we do fail, let us come as your children, to a loving Heavenly Father that forgives and cleanses us up and we can keep on keeping on. And we want to thank you now for your grace and your mercy. And Lord, we pray and thank you for the food that we're about to receive in the, in the fellowship hall. And we thank you for one another. We love everybody. We forgive everybody. And we forgive ourselves in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. If you do need prayer, come up. Charles will be up.